Hello everyone, we are continuing on our uh, module and our week on the architecture 2 that is Hindu temple and architecture and this uh, in this lecture we will be starting with uh, this one particular site in, in northern Karnataka that is Pattadakalu or Pattadakal in which we find that there are two kinds of temples both South Indian temples and North Indian temples. So, in the earlier lectures we have already looked into some of the characteristic features, the basic characteristic features of the developments in, in Southern Indian as well as the Northern Indian temples and if you can take example from what we have seen in Bhubaneswar and also uh, perhaps from the other sites like Deogar and then um, so on uh, and Bhitargao and so on. So, if those are the examples we have seen from northern India and in south we have looked into the temples of Mamallapuram and Kanchipuram. So, in which we have already looked into some of the basic characteristic features of the south Indian and northern Indian temples and this is a unique site Pattadakalu which is also a UNESCO world heritage site in northern Karnataka where we find both south Indian and north Indian temples at the same site which is rare which is perhaps the only site in the entire Indian subcontinent which displays such kind of uh, experimentation. So, this site of Pattadakalu it developed under the patronage of the Chalukya kings of Badami and, and Pattadakalu. So, this is a place which is where we find that I mean this is this was a this was also this also acted as the capital city of the Chalukyas for a for a period of time and the Chalukyas were active here between 6th and 8th century AD. Now, what we find here as we have already discussed that uh, there are many temples at the same site and it is not necessarily that all the temples are built at the same time. So, there were um, you know there were many events, there were uh, occasions for which the, they, they have been commemorated by my building these temples and for that reason we find that there are many different patrons and many different aspirations that came together in the site of Pattadakalu. Now, as I have already mentioned how there are both North Indian and South Indian temples. So, this particular uh, this, this view of this site of Pattadakalu that shows us for example, if we look into this temple here we see how there are those horizontal the steers in this uh, temple um, uh, shikara and this already has this pyramidal orientation and on the top of that we have this copula or the stupika. So, this is how and of course, that here is the kalasha. So, these are some of the basic characteristic features we have already studied in the Dharmaraja Ratha and of course, that was also been developed further in the short temple in Mamallapuram as well as the one in Kanchipuram, the ones in Kanchipuram. Now, here what we find that if this is one uh, way of temple building here, then right beside that there is a temple which shows this shikara and this base and uh, everything else which is more like this Rekha Deol or this uh, the spire of the temple which is very much like the ones we have seen in Bhubaneswar and so on. So, which is a very characteristically a northern Indian temple which is also known as the Nagara style of architecture and the one which we find in southern India that is called as a Dravidian architecture or Dravida style. So, we see there is this unique site where both this kind of temple building styles they coexist. So, here we have a Dravira style, here we have a Dravira style and here at the center we have a Nagara style architecture. So, one can imagine on the top of that there must have been this Amalaka stone and on the top of that there must have been this Kalasha. So, that is how this temple was constructed. So, these are some of the things that we find to be unique to this site of Patarakalu and in this site we have around 9 Hindu temples and 1 Jaina temple. So, all together there are around 10 temples which they are all protected in this area and uh, this entire site is now considered as the UNESCO world heritage site for its uniqueness in terms of bringing this southern Indian and northern Indian temple building styles together.
Now once we see some of the characteristic features of these temples, for example, both the southern Indian and northern Indian, we also find that there are more than just have following certain kind of architectural treaties for making the temples. For example, here we have in the left side of the screen Virupaksha temple and the Virupaksha temple was actually modeled after the Kailashnathar temple in, in Kanchipuram. So, uh, the Pallavas of Kanchi and the and the Chalukyas or of Badami and Patadakal, they were always in they were always involved in warfare and there have been accounts in which the Chalukyas were uh, defeated by the Pallavas. But towards the end we also find that how the Chalukyas managed to defeat the Pallavas and they took over the city of this prosperous city of Kanchipuram. So, after the Chalukyas took over the city of Kanchipuram, they wanted to commemorate this particular um, this event which really he held a high significance in their histories, uh, history of the Chalukyas and that is the reason what they did, they wanted to uh, uh, erect this temple, they wanted to construct this temple at the site of Patadakal uh, which replicate or almost like which mimics the style of the Kailashnatha temple from Kanchipuram. So, Kailashnatha the temple as I have already mentioned um, which was built it during the same time period it was perhaps being built in the 7th century or so on and this is also the same uh, this is also this temple the Virupaksha temple which was built during like 7th and 8th centuries and we see uncanny similarities between the Navimana or the main sanctum sanctorum and also like I mean the arrangement of the mandapas as well as this pyramidal roof and everything else. So, it closely follows the programmatic of the ground plan, the superstructure and everything else of the Kailashnatha temple here. So, this is this is a sign that I mean how when even when we talk about religion, when we talk about um, a particular building style, so art is never really uh, away from politics. So, that is the reason this is one particular example which we can actually put forward to argue how this political dominance or the political conquest that actually had a huge deal of impact in terms of what kind of temple will be built at this site of Patadakalu. And that is the reason we find that the rulers, the Chalukya rulers, they made a very conscious decision of what kind of temple do they want there at the site of Patadakalu after they have defeated the Pallavas of Kanchipuram. So, this particular uh, decision of building a temple which resembles, which closely resembles the Kailashnatha temple at Kanchipuram, that says something about how architecture is not just about uh, following the architectural treaties, following the Shastras or Agamas, the prescriptive texts. The, the Sanskrit text or the regional text on architecture and so on, but it is it, it goes beyond that. There are also this political aspirations, there are also this contemporary happenings which, which make uh, um, an impact um, on, on how these uh, buildings are erected. On the other hand, we also find that there are temples like this Galaganatha temple that is there in the right side of the screen, which is a very characteristic northern Indian temple or a Nagara style architecture. And here we see that how this temple is situated on this slightly higher platform that uh, announces its divine presence. And then on the top of that we have this very simple this uh, square temple with, with this uh, square uh, ground plan. And on the top of that we have this uh, impressive superstructure and uh, this this superstructure which is not pyramidal as the virupaksha temple that that we find here it is much more that i mean this curvilinear line which which sort of also punctuates its uh, its its resemblance uh, with with the ones uh, with the temples which are built in uh, for example in bhubaneswar and in parts of central india and northern india so those are the characteristics we find them to be very different and th they are the also ones that that make us think that i mean whoever had worked here in this site they were 
uh, well um, acquainted with the knowledge of building both kind of temples. And of course, we see this very characteristic amalaka, the, uh, the, this corbelled stone on the top of it and the kalasha. So, all those things which we find to be the prime characteristic features of the northern Indian temples of the Nagara style architecture, they are present here in the Galaganatha temple. Galaganatha temple is also a temple which is dedicated to Lord Shiva. Now, what we see here that is that also says something about its um, the architectural experiments that is there are extensions if we can see in this sides. So, of course, that I mean all the extensions did not really survive. So, we have extensions in both the sides of this temple, but we, we can think that I mean perhaps there also had been extensions in front of this temple area which did not really survive. So, we can imagine there must have been an entrance porch or like an Ardhamandapa which allows the devotees to stand there and then slowly approach to this Garvagriha or the womb chamber which is here. So, we do not really see this part surviving, but this extensions those are there in the sides that tell us something about how this temple might have been uh, constructed initially. Now, that also says something about how we have already spoken about the various projections for example, the use of Mandapa in Parashurameshwara temple in, in Bhubaneswar and, and similar kind of activities that I mean it is not just the Garvagriha or the womb chamber or the sanctum sanctorum which holds the significance in building this temple architecture, but there are also this adjoined uh, units which also are equally important. They became important for giving shelter to the devotees, for performing different kind of ceremonial rites and music and so on. So, we see that I mean how there have been this kind of this experimentation and both with this uh, both with the northern Indian style as well as the southern Indian style and all these temples are uh, predominantly built of sandstone. So, from there if we move little further and we go back to Tamil Nadu. So, there we find that there is another city which came into prominence or the another region that came into prominence in the slightly later times it will be between 9th and 12th century and th that, that is uh, that, that happened under the patronage of the Chola dynasty. The Cholas are the ones who also uh, who emerged as really powerful during the 9th century and then the uh, um, they, they continued to rule these areas uh, which was concentrated initially in the Kaveri Delta in, in uh, central and towards the southern Tamil Nadu and then from there we find that I mean they have um, they, they have expanded their political expansion and um, that was not only just limited to parts of southern India, but they, they have also managed to send their um, you know ambassadors, the merchants and so on to different parts of Southeast Asia. And that is also another reason for which we find that the merchant communities and different uh, groups of people from southern India, they started uh, immigrating to different parts of Southeast Asia um, from a very early time. Now, what we find during the Chola period? So, during Chola period, we find the, the architecture building that started in the Kaveri Delta and around that area, we find that both brick temples and the stone temples where they were built and they were practiced. So, some of the smaller scale Chola temples we find in which there are the stone bases or, or, or and then on the top of that the superstructure and everything else were made of brick and then those brick structures were plastered thoroughly and of course, that the way we have already discussed in the earlier modules that how um, the plastered walls were usually painted. So, that kind of activity persisted there as well. Now, in some of the other cases for example, we see with time some of the grand Chora temples that, that came into prominence, they would be made of entirely granite stone. Now, granite stone is also something that marks a departure from the use of sandstone that we have already studied. So, sandstone is something we see that is uh, uh, that is um, comparatively uh, easier to carve 
and granite is one of the hardest stones to carve. So, that is the reason what we find here in this Chola temples that um, the, the images that they also have a certain kind of the surface texture, the kind of details they become slightly different from the ones that we have seen in the sandstone temples. For example, the ones which were built by the Pallavas in Kanchipuram and in Mahamallapuram and so on. Now, what we see here uh, in terms of like I mean perhaps the most important uh, Shola temple and that is uh, one of the most important Shola temple will be the Raja Rajeshwara temple or Vrihadishwara temple which is also known as Periyakoil in Tamil. So, this temple was built in the city of Tanjavur and Tanjavur is, is again situated by the River Kaveri and uh, a prominent city that uh, is still relevant for its significance in terms of the artisanal works and trade activities even today. And this city along with few of the other sites for example, Dharasuram and Gangai Konda Cholapuram. So, those are the other places we find to be um, you know very prominent under the Chola patronage. So, this is a temple that we find there and this is this was a built uh, after one of the conquests of Raja Raja Chola and that is the reason he dedicated this uh, temple to his, he dedicated this temple to Lord Shiva who was uh, of course, I mean his revered deity and then what we find here that is the reason he uh, also called this particular uh, um, temple as like Raja Rajeshwara, the king of Raja Raja. So, that is how in other words we can see that how uh, a king bows in front of the gods and that is that is the gesture that was shown in this temple. However, if we also get into the details of the temple, we see that there are some of the other um, aspirations perhaps. Now, if we see the construction and architecture of this temple complex and I will start with the, the entrance gateways and that that is something that we have here in the left side of the screen. And if we see the entrance gateways, there are series of entrance gateways that we have here. For example, um, the one um, here and then there was another entrance gateway that was built by the Maratha rulers at, at a much later time. Now, if we see this on the top of this entrance gateways are called Gopuras and uh, this massive Gopuras we find they were started to be built uh, from this Choda period. In the uh, Pallava period we have the, uh, the entrance to the gateways, but I mean they were not as big as the Cholas and after the Chola period we will find the temple complex or the Gopuras or the uh, this doorways to the temple complexes they became even grander and that is how this loft massive monumental gigantic temple uh, entrances or the Gopuras they, they came into existence uh, in, in southern India after 13th and 14th centuries. Now, going back in time during the Chola period this temple uh, Raja Rajeshwara temple or Periyakoil it was built in um, between 10th and 11th centuries and what we see here if we look into the, um, the architecture of these gateways there is this barrel roof member on the, on the top of this gateway and this is something that we see that that came from this Bhima Ratha uh, or like I mean this barrel roof structure that we have found in Mamallapuram. So, as I have already noted that how those experiments those took place in Mamallapuram during 7th and 8th centuries they had a huge impact in terms of how South Indian temple architecture had uh, evolved with time. So, this is a great example of that. And uh, so, what we find here there is this barrel roof um, crowning member of the uh, of this Gopura structure and by the sides we have this trifoil arch motif which we have already recognized in the Bhima Ratha in uh, Mamallapuram. And on the top of that there are those series of Kalashas and we have already uh, explained the importance of Kalashas in the temples for their uh, relationship to life, sustainment and death. And then what we also see there that how the this uh, structures became more and more complicated is this how there are in this tiered roof or this terrace 
what we have here there are uh, this this replication of this particular this arch motif that that persisted in various levels and at the same time there are also this this smaller this barrel roof structures which sort of like I mean it, they, they seem to suggest like I mean smaller versions of this um, the barrel roof uh, gopura structures there in the various uh, registers of this uh, you know this, this entrance gateway. So, this idea of the replication and the idea of replication and multiplication that is something that we have already studied in terms of understanding how the idea of uh, this uh, the expansion of the universe and expansion of creation that takes place something that we have uh, you know studied uh, and then we see how that also makes an impact on um, this very impressive uh, entrance gateways built by the Shola rulers. Now, from there and of course, if we see that the temple proper in the temple proper uh, would uh, would be different from this barrel roof structure because the temple proper will have this pyramidal roof and then on the top of the pyramidal roof we will have this stupika uh, and uh, then on the top of the stupika we will have the finial. Uh, so, those are the differences we need to understand that what is used for the gopuras, what is used for the temple proper. So, those characteristic features we can see to be part of the Shola temples. Now, apart from that we also see that with time how certain elements of the temple area that got more and more complicated. So, in this area which is uh, primarily a rectangular space and in this space which is also walled which is uh, very carefully fenced and these are the entrance gateways through which you uh, get into the courtyard of the temple and then finally, go to the temple. So, in front of the temple we also find there is adjoining mandapa which is a uh, dedicated to uh, Shiva's mount Nandi. So, and then there is a massive uh, sculpture of a bull a seated bull which is uh, placed there in this adjoining mandapa. So, as I have said that the complexity was heightened with time and with uh, how this uh, the conception of the multiplicity and replication that that sort of um, informed the building uh, philosophy. So, those things we find them to be uh, materialized in this temple of Raja Rajeshwara in Tanjavur. Now, in the temple with the inside the temple we also find that there are those ceremonial halls like the Ardha Mandapa from which one can approach to the temple and then there are those large ceremonial halls and at the end of it we have the vestibule this narrow pathway which connects this ceremonial hall with the Garvagriha and inside the Garvagriha there is a gigantic Shiva Lingam or this um, of course, this abstracted manifestation of Lord Shiva. Now, around the Garvagriha we also find there is an inner circumambulatory path. So, this circumambulatory path is now closed and it is only accessed by the members of the archaeological survey of India. However, it was initially been there and perhaps it was used by very few uh, members perhaps used by the, uh, the people from the royal family, but not for the commoners. Now, what we see in this inner circumambulatory path that there is already an uh, uh, circumambulatory path around the temple in the open space and then within the temple also there is this inner circumambulatory path and in that pathway which is around the Garvagriha we have fantastic mural paintings in that area and those mural paintings they um, depict different Shaiva themes for example, the Shaiva saints who are the, the 63 Shaiva saints of Tamil Nadu who are highly revered. So, there some of their stories and then uh, some of the uh, deeds of uh, Shiva for example, uh, Tripurantaka and so on. So, those are some of the stories we find them to be depicted in this inner some circumambulatory path and some of the murals are still there, but uh, for its fragile condition the archaeological survey had restricted entry of general audience to these areas. Now, from there I just also wanted to get into this idea that how these temples which were constructed during the Chola period they did not really just um, you know act as a place for uh, worship or making a divine connection, but it was also something that was uh, integrally related to 
politics. So, for example, we find that how uh, in these temples different kind of activities starting with uh, the administrative activities and trade relations they also took place and then there are a series of inscriptions in the temple walls that talk about the uh, this different kind of donations which were made by the, the royal court as well as different deeds of Raja Raja Chola. So, and so that, that says something that how the temple also was a site for uh, communicating these political messages to the general audiences as well as it was a very much uh, it was an integral part of the administrative uh, functions of the state. Now, we also see that I mean the temples were also a site where the kings tried uh, depicting themselves as, as someone who is close to the god or they are the, uh, the human manifestation of these divine powers. And those are some of the ways in which we find that either the, the, the kings would uh, depict themselves or they would uh, patronize the, uh, the artisans to depict the kings in the most uh, respectful way possible, but at the same time humble. So, uh, but the, there are certain uh, sculptures we find that they are of high interest. So, for example, here we have one, one particular image in which we find this uh, Chandesha no Graham Murthy and that, that comes from Gangai Konda Cholapuram and in here we find this particular figure which is Raja Raja. Chola and who is a, who's a son of Raja Raja Chola and uh, he uh, depicted himself or um, as this Shaiva Saint Chandesha. So, here what we find that there is this uh, very impressive and graceful figure of Shiva and Parvati they are seated here and then we have this particular figure who is Chandesha and Shiva is putting a garland on the top of his head. And if we also see some of the iconographic traits and its uh, uh, some of the inscriptions which are associated with it, we see that it is not only a depiction of this Shaiva and Chandesha, but it is also a depiction of Rajendra Chola himself. So, in other words, we find that I mean th through this sculpture, Rajendra Chola also tried to establish that he had been um, uh, you know blessed by Lord Shiva, and that is the reason he is a legitimate ruler. So, this, this ideas about legitimacy, the ideas about ruling and everything else, they came alive in this kind of sculptures. From there, we also find that there are this massive development in terms of making bronze idols. So, for our uh, focus on the stone sculptures and stone architecture, we did not get in detail of the bronze sculptures. However, one can see what happened in this particular bronze sculptures that uh, they were built in terms of how uh, th they were not really kept in the in Garbhagriha or the womb chamber, but they were specifically made for the uh, for the festivals. So this but bronze uh, idols are called Utsava Murtis or the Utsava Murti that means the idols which are uh, you know utilized during the festivals. And one of the most celebrated images we will find that is Shiva Nataraja and um, the how this, this particular image came into being during the Chola period. I mean of course, there are some of the earlier examples, but perhaps in the Chola period we find that this image reached its zenith of refinement and all the different uh, philosophical um, you know connotations and its symbols and everything that came alive in this image.